Does the Saints season depend on Clint Kubiak being the quote-unquote next big thing? New Saints offensive coordinator Clint Kubiak, we have covered him extensively. The question here, how important is he that he is not just good, not just a capable offensive coordinator, but the next big thing, which I would assume is like the next Sean McVay, you know, the next Kyle Shanahan, the next Mike McDaniel, truly elevating himself up into that top tier Upper echelon, echelon, word of the day, that upper echelon of us offensive coordinators. That's the question from New Orleans.Football, ladies. Well, it's actually from Via at Joso, 1995 on X. Y'all can't see it behind me, but boom, there you go. That's where the question came from. The Martins question of the day. Martins is the home Martins, to wise- The Martins question of the day. Little did I know, Martin was, was dropping the sponsorship here. Martins. So much more than wine. Selection of hand-picked barrels like bourbons, whiskeys, and more. Martin, so much more than just wine. All right. Yeah, I mean, look, ladies and gentlemen, it's drinking season, no doubt about it. I mean, the summertime, uh, if you're in the south, if you're in south Louisiana or south Mississippi or wherever you're from, doesn't really matter. Beaches, boats, there's more sun in the afternoon slash evening, which means happy hour is available, right? Easy to go longer into happy hour when you can get home at night and uh, daytime instead of nighttime. Instead of two drinks, you're getting three drinks. You know how three drinks works. Instead of three drinks, you're getting four drinks. It's drinking season, like I said, ladies and gentlemen. So, yeah, why, why not go to Martin's? So much more than wine, you know, or total wine, or wherever you go. Drink responsibly, ladies and gentlemen. With the Saints having minimal premium draft picks or free agent additions, it feels like the season kind of hinges on Kubiak being the next big thing. Do you agree with that approach, and do you think it is a smart strategy? I- Okay, do I think... Let me let me answer the question here for uh, Joe So. No, I don't think it, it hinges on him being the next big thing. Maybe the future of the Saints, like maybe if we're talking that we believe that the Saints could kind of retool, refigure things out, and then bada-bing, bada-boom, all of a sudden the Saints are in contention a couple of years from now. That probably does depend on how good Kubiak is. This season right now, all that all that matters is if Clint Kubiak can prove he can be a viable, successful offensive coordinator. We don't need him right now, next season, to be Mike McDaniel. We don't need him to be Kyle Shanahan. We don't need Sean McVay. Will we need that a couple of years from now? Will we need that after Dennis Allen is not the head coach anymore? Will we need that to move into the next, truly move into the next, like, big-time chapter of successful Saints football? Yeah, Sure. But it's way too much to ask a first-time OC to come in and be like, hey, not only do we need you to implement your offense, get everything figured out, get the system in place, but we also need you to be a top-tier, high-level OC. I would say no. I would say it's closer to what, oh, this is about to be such a saucy little comparison. Saucy little comparison. I wonder, I wonder if Martins has any sauce. Or if it's just all hooch, all booze. Who do y'all think I'm about to say? But well, let's do a little trivia. Let's do a little, a little trivia here. Not sponsored by Martin. Just free, free and clear trivia. What incoming OC from last year do y'all think I think Clint Kubiak should strive to be? Go ahead and think about it. The answer is Todd Munkin. Todd Munkin from Baltimore. He came in. Would anyone say that he's the next big thing, OC? Would anybody say he's the next Sean McVay, the next Kyle Shanahan, the next you know Mike McDaniel? He's absolutely changing the NFL. He's a boy genius, all these things. No. But he came in. He installed a new offense. He got a system going. He led Lamar to an MVP. Baltimore was really good. That's exactly. And what did, what did Todd prove? He proved former head coach of the University of Southern Mississippi, my alma mater, by the way. He proved that he could be a viable OC. He proved that he could implement his offense, run the offense. It wasn't it wasn't a big deal. It wasn't a job too big for him. That is what Clint Kubiak should try and be. That's what we should shoot for. If you're coming in here, coming in the next season, and you're expecting Mike McDaniel or Sean McVay or Kyle Shanahan or Bobby Slowick, if you're expecting those things, that's a that's a high that's a high goal. It's a high goal. I don't, I don't think strategy is the Ooh, right Oh, baby. Oh, baby. 
Michael. Holy Lord have mercy. I cannot believe what I'm seeing. So we got a big Mike triplet. I, I mean, I told y'all it was drinking season. I told y'all it's beach season. I told y'all it's the summer. It's it's spring. It, it's the, I mean, you know, the bright lights and the happy hour. I didn't expect the coral th three-quarter zip. The th the quarter zip. I mean, it. I know Martin's is so much more than wine, but does Martin's have a, a salon or a barber in there as well? Because these two fellows are looking crisp. Look at Mike, the fade. What, what, this is new Mike. I mean, we got the coral zip, the coral three quarter. We got the ab. I mean, the t one of the tightest fades I've ever seen. I'm absolutely flabbergasted. And I'm absolutely befuddled at what I'm seeing right here. I mean, I'm not even sure what the question was. I'm not even sure what the question was because when they when they panned over, I wasn't expecting to be transported to Martha's Vineyards word here i don't think the saints are like aha i know how we can beat the salary cap let's hire the next big thing but if you're looking for reasons not to like give away your season tickets right now when they haven't made a splash anywhere else that is a path to how this team could not sign any major players only add a couple of draft picks and still get better so this goes I don't. I know this isn't the question, but I don't think like people are making a huge deal about this the free agency thing. Like people are making a huge deal of like why aren't the Saints bringing in big name players? Guys, what did y'all expect? We we are we are very transparent with what we're doing. We are holding put. We are offloading contracts that we deem too much. We are, we're offloading those. We're moving those off. And then we're keeping our core. We're keeping the core here. We're going to try and keep things consistent. We're going to try and say, you know what? We think we have something here with Kamara and Alave and Derek Carr. And, you know, we think all that's cool beans. We think that's all right. The DeMario and, you know, we're Tyron Matthew and we're cool there. What we're going to try and do is we're going to try and get logistically better. We're going to try and get schematically better. We're going to try and increase that. And we believe that if we increase that, we'll go from nine wins to 10 wins or 11 wins. That's pretty much it. We are not the Atlanta Falcons. The Atlanta Falcons were a seven-win team last year with arguably the worst quarterback in the NFL. The Atlanta Falcons knew, hey, if we want to get better, we have to address the elephant in the room. That was Desmond Ritter. They did. The Saints don't feel like that. If, I, if you asked me, and you kind of indirectly are, if you asked me, James, what do the Saints need to do to get better? I wouldn't have said, like, we really need Austin Eckler or we really need Keenan Allen or we really need Mike Williams or we really need any of these guys. Like, I wouldn't have said that. My, the first thing I would have said was we need to figure out what we're doing offensively. We need to figure out the scheme and the strategy and the playbook and the plays and the calling the plays. We need to figure out the culture. We need to figure out the locker room. Like, we need to figure all that out. We need to keep our guys healthy and get the ball to our playmakers. I think we'll be fine. Culture isn't a free agent you know this all like we can't go sign what we actually need to get better at would it have been cool if the saints would have went and got keenan allen and austin eckler or derrick henry or some of these big these big free agents that you see moving around yeah i guess like maybe but it's not something the saints have to do i think the saints are fine where they are as far as like the roster and the big name players quote unquote and all that stuff we are at a foundational phase of the like the true thinking behind what we're trying to do on the field. That's where we're at. So we have the draft, and the draft is going to be absolutely enormous. We've talked time and time and time and time and time again about how important it is to retool through the draft. I believe, and when I lay my head down to sleep every single night, and I pray, I pray that we nail this draft because if you told me we could sign zero free agents, but we end up with the next Puka Nakua or the next, you know, whatever, TJ Watt or the next major player like that coming out of this draft, whether that's a wide receiver late, whether that's a pat, an edge rusher early, whether that's, you know, if we get the next Sam Laporte, if you told me those things, if you told me we could retool, would I rather have 
the next Kyron Williams, Sam Laporta, Puka Nakua. Would I rather that? Or would I rather have Deontay Johnson, Mike Williams, Keenan Allen, and Austin Eckler? Give me the next Puka Nakua, Kyron Williams, Isaiah Pacheco's. Like, give me those young rookie contract players in the draft. That's what I'm hoping we do. So I, I don't think this whole free agency thing, I don't it, it's all it's all for show. It's all just, you know. It's all for show. It's all just big headlines, and that's it. Back to the top of the show. This is a soft reset. They're yep. not all in. They're catching yep. up on the cap a little. Yep. They're spending very conservatively. Yep. And in the process, they'd like to win 10 games with this. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Get you a Hefeweizen. I mean, enjoy the sunset. That's exactly what I'm saying. We aren't all, we aren't all in. Does that mean we're going to be bad? No. We're going to try and win 10, 11 games with the roster we have. We're going to try and be good. All those things are true. Can we catch fire? Can we have a huge jump up because Pistol Pete isn't wandering in the parking lot anymore? Is that possible? Absolutely that's possible. It's absolutely possible we could go from 9 wins to 12 wins and Carr and Kubiak could work and Kubiak could turn... Kamara into the you know an MVP and could turn Olave into a, a true number one like top five receiver that absolutely could happen. Could we get Brock Bowers, who's the next best tight end in the NFL? Could we get Jared Verse or could we get La Two or could we get these players and they could be defensive rookie of the year? Yes, absolutely. And if that happens, boom! All of a sudden we're we're right there with the Falcons to where it's like man we could win 11, 12 games, win the division, host a playoff game. So don't get caught up in all of this. Well, why haven't we signed Deontay Johnson? Why haven't we signed Saquon Barkley? You know, that's not where we're at right now. And that would just be making the same mistake. If we go get Mike Williams on some ridiculously expensive contract, we're right back where we were. We're trying to get out of the cap thing. And like I always said with Mickey Loomis, he keeps us relevant. He does. We're soft resetting. While trying to win 10, 11, 12 games. Team. And I think if you're going to talk yourself into that being possible, Clint Kubiak is the number one reason to believe that's possible. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, I, I think you got to bet on him. And, and this is just kind of where they're at, their reality. Let's, I want a second question here. Um, Mr. O Universe in the, in the chat, like it. Well, we got a second question from Mr. O Universe. In the, what's happening right now to the rebuild in 2014 to 2016. How do you feel about that comp? Got to wait. Well, I, I would say I really think we cannot judge the soft rebuild and the soft reset. I don't think we can truly judge it until we see the draft class. Until we see that. If the draft class is projects and reaches and nothing burgers, then, then we can have a talk. But we have to see what we do, what positions we fill, the strategy we have into that draft. That's what we got to say. I mean, I'm just going to make something up. But if you if we take J.J. McCarthy at 14 overall, that tells us something very different than if we take Brock Bowers at 14 overall, right? So we, we, we kind of have to wait to pass judgment on this cycle until we see those draft picks. I don't agree. Like, I, I love the optimism of that question, but that was not going to work if they didn't draft. Sheldon Rankins and Michael Thomas and Von Bell in 2016. Exactly. And have the Got to see the draft, draft. in like NFL history in 2017. You can only rebuild through the draft. Let's so, let's just yeah. talk that that yeah. span though. Like, do you feel like yeah. this is kind of the same thing? I'm not talking about that yeah. end outcome. Yes. Like yeah. 14, 15, yes. 16. Do you feel I like do. this is comparable to what happened then? Yes. And really more 15, yeah. 16 because I don't think 14 was the season that kind of said, "All right, like that's when the Saints kind of said, like this isn't working. We got to reset it." After 14. So yeah, 14 yeah. was an 14 all was in. A 14, flop. 14 was an all in year that flop. Yeah. I think they eventually got there. I mean, I'll never forget when Sean Payton was talking about seeing the photo of all the young guys on the sideline, how Lee Kakaha was one of them. And like they realized, that, I think it was after, it wasn't until the end. It's exactly the same. It's exactly the same. The Saints have realized, like they kind of went all in, whatever. They realize this isn't working. They, 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 this ain't it. And they're doing a their version of a soft reset. And I have said this so many times. Look, if you're a Saints fan and you're watching this video, consider yourself lucky that this is how you, we do soft resets. This is the style we do. <laughs> I mean, 
look at a team like I'm trying to think of an like like the Commanders. Look at the Commanders. They'd cut their arm off to win 10 games. And 9, 10, 11 wins. We're going into that season and we're saying, ah, we're, that, we're soft resetting. We're soft resetting. I can't believe this. I can't believe we're only going to win 9, 10, 11. I can't believe that. I can't believe we're only going to possibly win the division, host a playoff game. I'm not happy about this. Like be be happy that this is this is how we're doing this, and that's what I was talking about last week. And I talked about in the comments, people who were like the Saints are you know bought a dumpster franchise, whatever. I, I, I commented this. I wish I had the numbers in front of me. Since 197, it might be 1980 because I mean we we were founded in 67. Since 1980, okay, think about how long that is. Spoiler, it's before Sean Payton and Drew Brees, because everyone likes to give them all the credit for the success. Since 1980, the Saints are a top 12 team in the NFL in wins. Since 2000, spoiler, before Payton and Brees, since 2000, we're top seven in wins. This, like, that's, the, the, that's what the reality is. The Saints are not a tank, horrific, worst team of all time, worst team for five seasons in a row, worst team for whatever. We're coming back up now. They're, they're nose diving again. That's not how we really operate. We kind of operate, certainly over the last 20 years, of our worst years, our worst years, barring true catastrophe, natural disasters included, barring all of that, our worst years of those seven win type seasons. So this soft reset being a, I mean, if we just tick up a little bit, we're a 10-win team. If we tick up a little bit, we're an 11-win division champion team. There's a lot to be optimistic about with this team. Whether you hate Dennis Allen, whether you hate Derek Carr, whether you hate Dome Dogs, whether you hate Mickey Loomis, whether you hate the new layout of the Superdome, whatever it is. There is a lot of reason to be optimistic. Is it flashy? Is it super exciting? Kinda. It kinda is, depending on this draft class. If we get a Latu or a Brock Bowers or whoever, and we have the Alvin Kamaras and the Chris Alaves and these exciting players, Demario Davis and Marshawn Lattimore, Tyran Matthew, like there, there are reasons to be excited. There are absolutely reasons to be excited with this team. You know, everyone right now is propelling the Atlanta Falcons as Super Bowl champions. I said it last year, and I'll say it again, and maybe this will come back to bite me again. Kirk Cousins, Drake London, and B. John Robinson is not that far off from Derek Carr, Chris Olave, and Alvin Kamara. You could argue Olave is better than Drake London. You can say, you know, you can have your pick of Cousins or Carr, and you can have your pick of B. John and Alvin Kamara. It, there, we, we're lucky that we didn't have to make wholesale changes to still have a very viable core. The end of three straight years of losing that they decided to go a little more youth because then, um, you know, they started trading away guys like Malcolm Brown, the nose tackle. Like They were just like, let's stop having anybody that's like a 30-year-old, just a guy on our team. Thank uh, you. They obviously traded away Jimmy Graham because of what he could bring back. They, they had like Drew... Teron Armstead, Cam Jordan, and then they tried to really get younger. They felt a need to get younger. That's what we're doing. I don't know that I see that with this team. We just talked about them re-upping with a lot of older guys. Well, again, again, you got to wait until after the draft. Because if, 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 we're, if we take certain draft picks and then we plug them in and they're playing, all of a sudden it's like, man, we just got really young really quick. You know, all of a sudden if, I, I mean, you know, if we get Ladd McConkley and we get, Brock Bowers or Latu, and then we get, uh, you know, another cornerback or something that's that's starting, and then we get a linebacker that ends up starting. All of a sudden, you look around, you're like, man, it's just a bunch of 22 year olds. You know, I mean, what, what do we have? Three fifth round picks. I mean, what if those guys are starting? What if we find some? And you're going to say, well, I don't want fifth rounders starting. Ask Puka Nakua. Ask Isaiah Pacheco. Ask Kyron Williams. You got to wake up. Ah, oh. Just hit my finger on the edge of the desk. Ladies and gentlemen, y'all know I don't edit. Y'all know I don't do this all over again. This is a broken finger scenario. I mean, this this right here. Oh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Most people would cut the video. Most people would cut the video, probably go to the hospital, probably see if there's a fracture or a bone situation sticking out. 
Me, I'm just trudging along. I I'm not. I'm not missing a beat. Guys, they're not stockpiling draft picks. That 2015 draft, they had like 11 draft picks. I, I think, I want that path that that person suggested in the chat. I don't see it in front of them right now. I actually, I don't think it's comparable at all because I, I think that was a more extreme situation than what this is. I, I think the only thing that masked how extreme that was is that they had Drew Brees and, yeah. and they won games because of him. They got the seven because of the quarterback. I think that that was like a complete shedding almost. Yeah. Well, you could, you could argue that that situation was worse. Thus, you needed more of a shedding, which I which I would agree with. I mean, granted, having Drew Brees as your anchor is, you know, pretty nice anchor. So I could hear that. You know, I could hear where it's like, eh, the Saints aren't really full shedding here. Saints are just trying to retool in some spots. For the most part, you know, it's it's just kind of the same thing. I, I could hear that, you know, for sure. So that part, yes. But the idea of, like, we're going to not make these huge splashes, we're going to try and sh get rid of some bad contracts, and we're going to try and find our next core in the draft, I think that's the same. So outside of a couple guys, like, yeah, Cam, I feel like this Teron, Drew, and... and and then a couple of more guys. But, I feel like yeah. this team is considerably more talented. Like, I think yeah, there's a lot more sure. talented players on this team than... If we would have, you know, traded Marshawn, if we would have got rid of Cam Jordan, if we would have moved Kamara, if we would have, you know, cut Jamal Williams and we would have let Tyron Matthew walk, yeah, then it's then it's comparable. Because then you, then it's like, man, we're, we are completely new across the board. That, no doubt about it. Like, th this team way more talented because this team is staying together. I mean, we are a talented team. And, th and this this goes to the whole knee-jerk reaction thing. 12 months ago, I was telling you guys, Saints are a 12-1 team. This is a really good roster. I love these playmakers. I love this team. So if if, I, if just because of a bad year, sounded like Elmer Fudd for a second there, just because of a bad year, if all of a sudden I'm like, this roster's garbo, this roster's trash, Alave's a top 40 receiver and Camaras and past his prime and this guy can't play and this guy can't play. That's not how we operate here. We don't do the knee jerk reaction. We don't do that. I still believe this team is super talented. This roster is super talented. I just said it with the, with the Falcons playmakers versus the Saints playmakers. I still think Alvin Kamara is one of the best running backs in the NFL. Is Alvin Kamara worse than Austin Eckler? I don't think so. Is Alvin Kamara worse than Saquon Barkley? No, I would I would rather have Alvin Kamara than Saquon Barkley. I'll tell you that. Chris Olave is Chris Olave worse than Mike Williams or Keenan Allen? No, they're probably in the same in the same ballpark. So you know, look around. Is Demario Davis the Devin White just went to the Eagles? Spoiler: Demario Davis is way better than Devin White. Okay, so we've got players. Chauncey Gardner-Johnson just went back to the Eagles. Spoiler, Marshawn Lattimore is better than him. We've got players. We've got a good roster. We had a good roster going into last season. We have a good roster going into this season. What was the problem last season? Pete Carmichael, offensive play calling. Dennis Allen having to be involved with the offense. Pete Carmichael not knowing how to plug in a set of headphones. We fixed that. There you go. So I'm still optimistic. I'm not going to sit here and make, the, I'm not going to say, you know, Saints NFC champions, Saints 13 wins, like I was saying last year. I'm not going find, to find me five losses. I'm not going to say that. Definitely had a down year considering how easy the schedule was and all that. But there is still reason to be optimistic. Do not let one season, do not let a couple of games that came down to a field goal or a last second play or whatever. Don't let those coin flips completely change how you view this roster. That 16 team was was barren. Like they yeah. had they had a good receiver core in 16 and Drew, and that was it. Like it was Brandon Cooks, Drew, Mike Thomas, and uh Willie Sneed. Like that was the Mark Ingram was was solid then uh still too. So there was some decent pieces on offense, but like it, it was a it was a barren situation. This team feels closer to being able to win 10 games than those teams did right. if yeah, you isolate sure. the quarterback. Yeah, I mean, Drew Brees is Drew Brees, you know. So, hey, great video. Love it. Martins, <laughs> more than wine, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, we, we went through a lot of unbelievable coral, three-quarter zips. I've got two broken fingers now. Unbelievable stuff. I'm, I really am on a whole different level. Thank you very much for watching. Go down in the comments below. Let me know. Do you th how, how important do you think it is that Clint Kubiak is the next 
big, great, unbelievable boy genius OC. What do you think about what I said about the roster? Are you optimistic? Are you not optimistic? I got a feeling we're going to be getting into it left and right. Not, not, you know, not a negative connotation, but just lots of engagement in the comment section. I'll be down there. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.